I wanted to post another video about some jazz piano tips and, and things you can use to help your playing improve. Uh, last time I talked about thumb drop voicings, which allows your left hand to play a very simple voicing for the harmony and lets your right hand be completely free to play the melody or to improvise or whatever your right hand wants to do. Uh, this video is, I'm going to kind of expand on that a little bit. Um, the thumb drop voicings just had the thirds and sevens and then the root on the bottom, which is enough to define the chord, uh, but it doesn't really give you very much color. Um, and when you think about jazz piano playing, you think about a lot of those colorful kind of harmonies that that music kind of implies. So to start off with, these voicings are rootless left hand voicings. So we're getting rid of the root completely. That's going to free us up to play more color with our left hand. So the first two notes that we start with are going to be thirds and sevens, and because those define the quality of the chord. So if we started out with a C major 7 chord, we'd start out with E and B, and that could be a two note rootless voicing. Not any color in that voicing, but it could work. C dominant 7 would be there, C minor 7 would be here. Those could all be two note rootless voicings. And in fact, if you were playing through a blues, which has a lot of dominant chords in it, that actually may be the perfect thing to play. If I were to play through the head of a tune like Sandu, which is in the key of E flat, with just two note rootless voicings, so just thirds and sevens, you'd get this. dominant chords, just two notes, that may be the perfect thing to play. The next step in these uh, rootless voicings would be to add a third note. And the place we're going to add that, so we've got our uh, thirds and sevens here in these two fingers, we're going to add our third note up here in the thumb. So we're going to think about it as being either the five of the chord or the nine of the chord. Five kind of that area of the five kind of encompasses a lot of color tones, and then the nine uh, has nine, flat nine, and sharp nine. So if we were back in the key of C, uh, C major seven, we start out with that. Our thumb, we could just think to ourselves, is it closest to the five or the nine? It's closest to the nine, so there's my three note voicing. Right there. If I took that through the same blues, Sandu, you'd get this. hadn't have run into each other, I would have been able to play them all three note uh, rootless voicings, but I could play the melody up an octave and I could have done all the all the, the three notes there. Okay, so the next step would be to add a fourth note if you want more color. So we're back in the key of C major, two notes there, third note, the nine. Now we've got this other area where we've got two extra fingers. If we already got nine up here, we're going to be adding a five or something close to five. So let's just add five. That would be there. So there's my C major 7 chord. If the bass player is down here, you've got... It sounds really good. Nice amount of color in there. You're still omitting the root. So let me play through Sandu again. I'll play the melody up an octave. And we'll do four note rootless voicings. You can hear how it really will fill out a lot of that color. I still will have no roots anywhere but you're not gonna really miss it. You're still gonna realize that it's a blues, even though it's completely rootless. Sounded pretty good. A lot of cool color in there, I added a few extra chords, some altered color tones like altered nines, altered fives, and you can really get a sense 
of a lot of that color that you kind of associate with uh, jazz piano playing. So the concept again, very simple. Two note rootless voicing, thirds and sevens right here. Add a third note up here in the thumb, either five or nine, and then add a fourth note in here, in between thirds and sevens, whatever you're lacking. If you had nine up here, it's gonna be five. If you had five up here, it's gonna be nine in there. So, if you have any questions about this or any clarification, again, please leave them in the comment section below. I'm trying to uh, kind of make like a little laundry list of some questions that you guys have had, and they've been great, and I'll try to get to all those in the future. And I'm posting these now up on my website at greggoblemusic.com under the video tutorial section and also on my YouTube channel, which I'll put links to in the description of this video. All right, thanks.